Hi, I'm the Great Obex, and we're here today with Dr. Mike Marshall to discuss buoyancy. You feel the force of gravity pulling down on you every single day. It's always this force downwards, MG. But when you sit inside a liquid like a bathtub or a swimming pool or something like that, you don't feel that as greatly. You no, you float. That. Right, and we feel that anytime we're in the bathtub floating around, you have what's called a buoyant force that pushes up on you. And that comes from displacing the water and having that mass of water trying to push you back out of the way. Exactly. So normally... Wow! <laughs> Normally, we think of that as happening when liquids. Whenever you displace water, the water level rises and you feel that upward buoyant force. But it happens with everything. It can happen with a gas as well. Mm. Like in this room right now, we're displacing gas. It's just that the buoyant force depends on the density of the fluid. Right. So luckily for us, today, I have sodium hexafluoride. which is five times the density of the air that's around us right now. Meaning that literally, I can pour it into this aquarium and fill this aquarium with it. As it goes down, it'll drop because it's heavier than the air around us. And now you might want to cover it with a lid so it doesn't spray out everywhere. Because the disadvantage to that is... I imagine just lowering your voice like crazy. The speed of sound of <laughs> and sodium hexafluoride is only 133 meters per second compared to 340 meters per second of air. So as a result, you get a way deeper voice. But it sounds pretty cool. It's a... So there's the gas level. Oh, that's oh my god, that's so cool! <laughs> the vapor from the dry ice and water is sitting on top of that. So it's full. And we should be able to float the boat at that level. I think that what we really need to do is the buoyant force is going to be based on how big the boat is, how much mm -hmm. area it is. A bigger displacement is going to yeah. give us a bigger upward. Large cross-sectional area. So let's get a bigger boat. We're going to need a bigger boat. Wait. We're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> That's a reference to Jaws. So what we're going to attempt to do here is to displace the gas enough that this will still actually float. Right. <laughs> it does actually work. Cool. Yeah. So what's happening? So, I mean, there's the gas is five times as dense as the air, which means it's going to exert an upward buoyant force five times as great as we do in this room. What we need is a large area to displace a large volume of this gas, and of course a high enough wall on the boat. So, so the gas is just pour over the inside. Yeah. So it's the same thing as, as a boat in, in water. We just want to make sure that the walls are high enough that the water doesn't pour in and sink it. Now I know what you're thinking. Orbex, you probably created some sort of magic boat that just floats in midair. <laughs> well, check it out. It doesn't float in midair. <laughs> it only floats inside this aquarium that we filled with SF6. So there's the buoyant force. It's the force of gravity on the displaced liquid pushing it back down to push you back up and out. So hey, get back to work. That's still so strange. I don't like it. I'm super lightheaded. <laughs>